capacity. So uh, some people talk about the idea that the pancreas doesn't need to function at 100% for Absolutely a not, yeah. or type 2 diabetic, you know, to, to get back to have regular blood glucose numbers. That, right. So what percent of the pancreas, like how much functioning of the pancreas does one need to have acceptable? Yeah, and, and, and that's a great question because I, I have heard a good friends of mine that are, that are you know, uh, endocrinologists that have been, you know, done their PhD and their MD degree in, in diabetology. Uh, the, 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 the standard the conventional wisdom out there is that even before somebody is fully diagnosed with prediabetes or right there around that borderline prediabetic level, that the pancreas has already um, uh, decreased its functionality of being able to produce insulin by 60%. Now that is initially gives the impression that it's hopeless, right? That you know, that, that's kind of promoted in that way. It's like, oh man, if even by the time you're pre-diabetic, you've lost 60% of your functionality of producing insulin, then what hope is there for diabetics? But the reality is, is that that functionality can come back. And, 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 and especially because we are recognizing that that functionality is related even to low-grade infections in the pancreas that produce uh, an amyloid plaque in the pancreas. And this is pretty amazing that we are now able to call type 2 diabetes Alzheimer's of the pancreas. Ooh, Just like Alzheimer's is now being referred to as type 3 diabetes of the brain. And so what's really cool is that I'm even working with early, early Alzheimer's patients, helping them reverse their Alzheimer's using the very same strategies we use to reverse type 2 diabetes because it's essentially a similar disease in just in a different part of the body. This is one of my favorite subjects of all time. When I first read about the fact that Alzheimer's disease could be termed insulin resistance of the brain or type yeah. 3 diabetes, it was a, right. a light bulb went off in my head. Right. So we can go into a little bit of detail here about what exactly is uh, Alzheimer's disease and how specifically, how is it similar to uh, the type two diabetes in your pancreas? Well, um, so the, the one connection I just mentioned is that, that there's been studies showing for a long time that when you can actually measure this amylin or this, this amyloid plaque, that's, that's a, 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 a close cousin to the amyloid, to the beta amyloid that builds up in the brain associated with cognitive decline in Alzheimer's and other forms of dementia. And so, so that's one connection. So that, that what was, what's really interesting here the, to understand and, and not to confuse the, the, the listeners is that beta amyloid and amylin are actually a part of an innate immune response. In other words, if you didn't have this response, you would probably die of meningitis Okay, uh, with, with, with the, in terms of brain function, and the pancreas would probably get shut down. So in other words, we need to ask the question, why is the body using this innate immune response in this way, and what can we learn about that mechanism? And so that's, that's why it's so critical that people understand the value of the 100% whole plant-based diet uh, beyond its impact on blood sugars, because that is really the way to optimize the precursors that, that, that minimize the body's production of things that can lead to damage to the beta cells in the pancreas, their ability to make insulin, or damage the, the neurons in the brain, the memory cells in the hippocampus of the brain that then lead to Alzheimer's disease. So, so one, one interesting mechanistic point here is, is that there's an enzyme in the brain uh, and in the body is called IDE, insulin degrading enzyme. And, and this enzyme, uh, when I measure insulin levels, the insulin level almost is always the highest at the one hour, but by the second hour, many times it goes from super high to optimal. Okay, so what happened? How could that insulin drop so quickly from such a high number? And the answer is the body is producing a lot, is, is, is allowing this insulin degrading enzyme to break it down quickly to prevent rapid hypoglycemia and coma, right? So, so it's a critical, but here's, here's the point. Insulin degrading enzyme also degrades beta amyloid plaque in the brain. 
And so if you're spending all your time degrading all this excess insulin that we're producing, trying to compensate for the high blood sugars due to the insulin resistance, then we're essentially shifting the focus on controlling insulin and beta amyloid goes out of control and the brain deteriorates from that memory goes out. So, so that's, those are several of the mechanisms that, that, that are similar mechanisms that involve both type 2 diabetes and type 3 diabetes, Alzheimer's uh, in, in general. So, so this is great. So if, I'm, if we're understanding you properly here, what you're saying is that if you go from 100% normal functionality, 100% insulin secretion capacity, all right. the way down to 40%, so you've lost 60% of your insulin production, at that point, we're technically termed a type two di- a, a person with type two diabetes, but yet that's still enough insulin to keep your blood glucose in the normal range as long as you're eating a low fat plant based whole foods diet. Correct? If you're if you're if you're following the lifestyle strategies, all the things that impact uh, and help reverse or resist insulin resistance, then then even if you only have a twenty percent capacity left of producing insulin, that's still enough. Okay, for for instance. Okay, uh, somebody has perfect insulin sensitivity or optimal because they exercise regularly, because they're eating the right diet, okay? They, you know, they don't need that 100% reserve capacity. They just need a little bit, right? And so you can have optimal blood sugars all day long, all year long for the rest of your life if you just maintain the right lifestyle, even if you have lost 80% of your capacity in theory. Uh, so so that's, that's the good news for these individuals. 